Good morning. This is one of my people decided to call while I'm in the midst of doing stuff. <laughs> but yeah. It's Tuesday, y'all. We woke up in the land of the living. We're able to see another day, have another opportunity to get it right. To strive to get it right. God in his mercy is so amazing. Yes. Thank God. <laughs> good morning you guys good morning good morning let's start it all over good morning i love y'all <laughs> um it's my song y'all oh lord you know what i was thinking about this morning or yesterday too god put on my mind um that no sin is greater than the other good morning walter um no sin is greater than the other we um, tend to think that a little lie or not doing the speed limit is a thing. God tells us to follow the rules of the land, so that's the thing. Um, we think that those little sins, or that's what we call them, we try to categorize them, those little sins. Um, is nothing compared to somebody that um, does murder or steals or commits adultery, whatever. You know, you, you hold some sins at a higher standard than you do others. But God tells us no sin is greater than you. If you lie, you're going to sit in the same hell as the person that killed. If you didn't get an opportunity, I didn't witness this. My son just came and told me. So then I 
I called the boy over there and I said, what did you say to my son? This three-year-old had no problem with repeating what he said. So that tells me that his environment has no problem with allowing him to speak this way. That's a problem for me because they're not explaining to him that one, that's incorrect behavior, two, that goes against God, three, that's so disrespectful for a three-year-old to be using that type of language. And it's this just, and the fact that he doesn't know, like I couldn't even get mad at the kid. I had to explain to him like, baby, we don't use that type of language. But I, I couldn't even get mad at him because I have to understand that he's a kid and he learned that from somewhere. And we have parents that will allow their kids to sit up and use this language and then it's funny when he do. <laughs> he said F this, he said screw, and they think that's funny and that's cute. That's not, that's sinful. And you're teaching your kid to be that way. You're teaching them that this, this thing right here is okay, but you'll tell them if he steals, you know, don't do that. That's, you can't steal, you can't do that, you know. But you just let him use any type of language and, and use it <laughs> in disrespecting another adult. The Bible says respect your elders. Uh, Walter says, hold on, uh, you guys, let's watch this traffic. So, um, Walter says, he who has sinned cash the first song. Yep. All have sinned and fought. Yep. Exactly. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that's what I'm getting. I told you guys about that, that you're going to sin to the day that you die. It's, it's, just the, it's just the nature of the flesh. You're going to sin to the day that you die, but you should not be committing the same sin over and over and over and over and over. Especially if you decided that, you know what, I'm going to walk this, this walk with God. I'm going to um, continue to walk in love, continue to walk according to God's will. Um, and I should not be battling with the same sins. I should not be battling with the same sins. You know, um, God is a person that he cleanses you. He renews you. So if he's renewed you, there's no reason why you still should be battling with the same sins. Um, you are going to have to deal with new ones because that's just, the, like, like I said, the nature of the flesh. The enemy is always trying to find a way to trip you up to make sure that um, you don't get to the promise. So he's always going to try to find another way to trick you, to deceive you. So that's always going to be in your path. You are in a constant fight, a constant fight. Every day you wake up and open your eyes, that is a new fight. When you're sleeping, there's fights going on for your soul then. There's always a constant fight. Um, so you have to be in constant battle. God tells us to put on the full armor of God. So that means all the time you are in battle. You are all should always be prepared to fight because that's what the enemy is doing. He's on attack. This is a war. It's not, you know, life is a war. Understand that. This is a war. We are on constant attack. The enemy wants your soul. He wants you not to follow God. He wants you in his kingdom and not in God. So he's going to constantly fight. You don't have anything else to do. That's, <laughs> that's his life. Kill, steal, and destroy. That's his mission. Um, Walter said, the ear takes my soul to him to end to hear um, parents cursing their kids and they wonder why they grow up being disrespectful. Not even grow up. You know what irritates me, Walter? It's when you cuss at your child, you curse around them, and then when they curse, you want to discipline them and tell them that they shouldn't be cursing. That's not how that works. Kids learn by what they see. We always want to tell them, do as I, um, do as I say, not as I do. That's not how it works with the kid. As a parent, the responsibility that you have on you is to lead by example. You must lead by example when you are a parent. You have to show your kid what it looks like to walk in excellence, what it looks like to not use the language that is not respectful of God. You have to show them what it looks like to not use drugs. You have to show them what it looks like, you know, to just be a woman or a man of God to be a respectful man, to be a respectful woman. You know, you can't walk out here in a uh, little of clothes and then to look at your daughter and get mad because she got on a two-piece and showing everything. She looking at her mom. Like, you have to show them what it looks like in order for them to pick up what they should be, how they should be. So that means you're going to have to change some things within you. 
That's why I tell my kids all the time. I'm learning from you just as well as you're learning from me. I can't be so um, mighty or whatever. I can't think of the word that I'm looking for that I um, feel like I can't learn anything. I can't change or I can't um, change the behavior that I display so that my kids know what it looks like. You know, we have to be representations of what we're teaching our kids. sure I graduated from college I can't tell them that they got to go to college and they got to make sure that they um, that they focus on their education and it's important to them if I've never done that you know even if I have to go back to school like I know a lot of parents some didn't finish and then you're telling your kids that hey you, you have to finish school you have to um, make sure that your education is important and then they look at you and you didn't do that okay to lead by example go back and finish school so that they can see that it doesn't stop there just because you've reached a certain age don't mean that you stop learning. You learn to the day that you die. You should be. You should always be growing. And again, like I tell y'all, my prayer is always to be better than I was yesterday. I do not want to be the same person that I was yesterday. I want to be continually improve, continually grow in God, in my, in my knowledge, um, in my parenting, in being a woman, in every area of my life I would like to grow. Um. Good gracious, like, everybody be in such a rush. Like, I had a lady yesterday that, um, she was in such a rush, right? And she was, like, just blowing at me, and I'm trying to wait for the, the um, <laughs> the guy to cross the street, right? So, and she was so pissed at me. I started driving, like, two miles an hour. <laughs> she was in such a rush. So petty sometimes, y'all. I'm petty. Y'all pray for me. I'm petty. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's crazy. You know, when I came back from where I was going, that same spot, that same spot where she was rushing me, some, a car had just ran into that building. And I'm like, <laughs> people don't understand. Like, you cannot. It's whatever. You got to follow the rules. You just have to. You know, you, you just, you got to. And, and if you don't, that's what happens. You know. But anyway. Um, so that, like I said, that was my, um, what was on my mind last night, God put on my mind to just talk about sin and, and help people understand that, you know, there's none greater than the other. You can't decide that there's a big sin, there's a small sin, or there's some things I can do, um, that God will look over, you know, or, you know, I can still get to heaven if, um, because the only thing I'm doing is this, you know, um, God is not, uh, Concerned about this little lie or you know that's not how that works you know God is like he cannot be a part of sin period there's no <laughs> you know, there's no exclusions there's no exceptions none of that you know it is what it is the same all sin weigh the same God said all sins weigh the same so you have to repent for every sin that you do um, so that's me. You constantly repenting every day. You know, every every day I get up, Lord, forgive me. You know, forgive me for any sin I've committed against you or against anybody else. You know, and put forgiveness in the hearts of those that I've sinned against. You know, because I want to make sure that God knows that I don't do the things I do intentionally. I'm constantly trying um, to constantly trying to improve myself. Constantly trying not to keep committing the same sins. Um, and then, especially when God tells me to stop doing something, when he speaks to me and says, you know what, you have to stop doing that. You know, I want to make sure that I don't go back to doing it. But again, I'm human, you know, and I will fail sometimes. And that's when I constantly pray, Lord, give me strength in those areas that I'm weak. Um, you be my strength, you know. So um, that's just really what I was really wanting to talk to you guys about. Just understand stay in repentance stay asking god for forgiveness you know um stay strong you know um where you're where you're weak lean on god you know surrender it all to him um that's what he's there for he tells us surrender it to me you don't have to do it by yourself you don't have to be in a place by yourself um, you, he said, I will leave you nor forsake you. So you're never by yourself. Um, so anything that's too strong, I mean, or that's uh, too heavy for you to carry, give it to God. 
give it to God. You should be giving it all to him. But, you know, some of us haven't learned to release it all. And I'm one of those people. Some things, some areas of my life I'm I'm releasing, some areas I'm holding on to because I don't I don't really know if I trust that yet. Um, and I'm just being transparent with you. You know, I'm not trying to uh, de de deter you or tell you something that um, is not true. I'm just going to keep it real with you. I just want to be true with you. I have moments where I'm just like, I don't know if I really trust that area yet with God. Um, even though I know that he will take care of it, it's just the human in me is just like, let me, I don't know yet. You know, give, give me a moment. I'm still, I'm still growing. I'm still learning to release it all. Um, but I, I haven't got there yet. And, um, I know that the same is true for so many people that are listening to me right now. And it's okay. It's okay for you to have those moments. You know, um, God doesn't expect us to just jump in and, um, automatically just release it all. He, he knows that it's a faith walk. You know, not a run. It's a walk. It's a faith walk. He knows that it's going to take time to you to get um, to places where you need to be in him. And everybody's walk is different. You know, some people walk slow. Some people walk fast. You know, some people walk real, real slow. You know, it's just everybody has their own time. Um, and Walter says repentant means to turn away. Yeah. Um, from I know it's not easy, but God forgives us seven times 70 in one day. He does. Um, and that's what repentance means. And that, that's what I tell my kids a lot of time. When you say sorry or when you apologize to someone, that means that you're, you're not going to do that again. It doesn't mean that you're saying sorry for the moment. No, you're saying sorry because I understand that there was something that I did wrong and I don't want to commit that wrong against you again. <clears throat> and I'm going to do my best not to do it. <clears throat> That's the same thing that what repentance is. You want to make sure that you don't commit that again. That you do everything in your power not to go back to that. <clears throat> is it going to be easy? Sometimes it's not. You know, sometimes it is. Sometimes it's not. You know, and, and, and trust and know the enemy knows when you <clears throat> repent about something. He'll find a way to, to bring it back in your face. You know, um, I know one the other day I was praying uh, about my uh, the guy I'm dating and he, he drinks a lot. So I was just praying like, Lord, make that be a, a bad taste in his mouth that, you know, eventually he'll he'll stop drinking like that. And when we went out the next day, it was like everybody was just bringing him alcohol, not no cups. They was bringing him bottles. You know, and I was like, wow, look at the trick of the enemy. He heard me say this. He heard me say, you know, what I was expecting out of this guy. And he knew that this was going to trip him up. So he made sure that even though he didn't buy it, that it was available to him. So understand that the enemy knows and hears your prayers too. That's why the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> you have to sometimes pray in the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit knows what to pray for ahead of time. And the enemy doesn't understand that. So most definitely make sure um, that you understand that there's no levels to sin. There's no levels. There's no some you can do and some you can't. You have to come from it all. Um, and God doesn't expect us to be perfect, but that's the reason for Jesus. That's definitely the reason for Jesus. Um, he, that's the reason why he laid his life down so that we can have somebody standing in as a mediator between us so God can have an understanding why we're not perfect. But he gave us a reason. He gave us righteousness. He gave us um, a way to be able to be righteous even when we're not. Even when the wages of sin is death, he decided, I don't want to give you that. I'm going to give you mercy and grace. And we have to ask for it. <laughs> we have to ask for forgiveness. That's something we have to ask for. He's not going to push it on you. You have to ask for it. So, you guys, I'm in my destination. So, I'm going to go ahead and pray for you guys. Um, so, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil forever and ever. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Father, we thank you this morning for granting us another day of mercy and grace. Father, for giving us another morning, another opportunity to get things right with you, Father God. Father God, we thank you for forgiving us, Lord God. We repent right now, Lord God. Anything in us that's not of you, we give it to you. We lay it at your feet, Father God. 
God. Father, we thank you for placing forgiveness of the hearts of those that we may have sinned against, Father God. Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, just for granting us mercy and grace, Father God. We don't even understand how important that is, Father God, because we don't know the battles that you're fighting that is unseen, because if we see those battles, it's already too late. It's already too late, so we gotta be praying and making sure that we are staying in the spirit right now, Father God. So we thank you for fighting those battles that we did not see, for having grace and mercy upon us and didn't um, give us the, the um the sentence that we deserve, death, Father God. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for covering our family, our friends, our enemies, Father God. Anything that comes up against us, Father God, we pray against it right now, Father God. We thank you for your hedge of protection. We thank you for sending your travel angels, Father God, to protect us as we go into and to and from our destination today. We thank you for covering our children, Lord God, as we send them away to daycare, to school, Father God. Lord God, we thank you for... <clears throat> Um, granting them favor with men, Father God. We thank you for granting us favor on our jobs, Father God. We thank you for opening doors that would normally be shut. We thank you for entrepreneurship, Lord God. We thank you for making us the head and not the tail above and not beneath. Bless going in and bless going out, Father God. You blessed us so much, Father God, and we thank you for it. Just for being the most amazing God that we can serve, Lord, the living God. One that still speaks to us, Lord God. Father, we thank you for opening our ears to, receive, uh, to hear you and our hearts to receive you father we ask these prayers and blessings name of the father the son and of the holy spirit amen amen and amen so you guys thank you so much i love y'all thank you for taking time out of your day to connect with me to pray with me to come on one accord with me because we do want god in the presence of us um we need him in the presence of us constantly um, thank you so much for, again, taking that time out to just pray with me. I love y'all. There's nothing you could do about it. So accept it. Move on. God loves you more. So have a wonderful Tuesday. And if God willing, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.